Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey here on Daybreak. We focus on Shelton Weekly at this time, and it's brought to you by Our Community Credit Union. I have two great guests with some wonderful updates to pass along to us here. From the police department, Darren Moody, the chief, and Mike Patty, Shelton Fire Marshal. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Let's uh, start with you, Mike. Central Mason Fire and EMS department updates for us. we got Memorial Day weekend and a lot of warm summer weather. What are some things that you'd like to share with the listeners? Well, it was pretty cool yesterday, but I understand looking at the weather reports that it's going to be in the 70s today and then up into the 80s and even 90s over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, we started having uh, our brush fires early this year. Matter of fact, we've already sent rigs over to the east side for uh, fire mobilizations. Wow. So really early in the season for that. Um, we're looking at uh, brush fire activity being moderate uh, over the weekend. We had some training in brush fires, and it didn't take much for the flash fuels, the grasses and, and fine fuels, to get started with uh, just even minor uh, ignition devices. Mm -hmm. So as always, we're asking people to be real vigilant with their uh, campfires, uh, even barbecues, charcoal, and when they throw out their uh, used up charcoal and things like that for uh, fires over the weekend and from here on out over the summertime. There's no burn bans or anything right now? Not at this point. Like We're that. not looking at, normally we don't look at burn bans until early part of July, but uh, we're going to have to watch and see how the rest of this month and into June goes. We may have to put up, put one on uh, early if the weather continues like this. Are there any restrictions in the city of Shelton limits that uh, residents need to know about for fires? Well, as always, it's been for the past few years, uh, there is no burning in the city of Shelton. We can have actual uh, recreational uh, fires, you know, in the small little burn rings for marshmallows or weenie roast, things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the fires are limited to... Uh, firewood, uh, charcoal briquettes, just th things like that in the in the fire rings, and the fires can't be anything larger than three foot by three foot. If you think that uh, maybe a neighbor or a, someone in the in the area where you live is is burning or whatever, who do you call? Uh, do you call the police department? Do you call the fire department? Who do you call? Well, they call nine one one. It's uh, reported as a as a um, quote unquote illegal burn or a burn investigation. And we'll come out and take a look at it. If the fire is recreational in nature and they're burning the approved materials, uh, we'll look at it and say, have a nice day. Uh, if it's outside the required uh, things that are needed to look at it, we will uh, educate the folks and ask them to extinguish the fire. What else is going on at Central Mason Fire? Uh, a lot of interesting things. We've got, uh, this afternoon, we'll be taking delivery of a, of a new ambulance, a new medic unit. Uh, that actually it's a uh, new chassis that we've put an old uh, ambulance yeah, okay. box on, uh, saving the citizens about half of the cost of a, of a regular ambulance. This is the third unit that we've uh, put into service. And we'll be getting that this afternoon uh, after we get it outfitted, get the radios uh, installed, get everything put together. We should have it back in service probably two weeks, so early mid-June. Wow. Uh, we are working on a program uh, called a reserve firefighter program and the end result of that is hoping to uh, staff a, a fourth station uh, at least 85 to 95 percent of the time and that hopefully will, will reduce our response times to some of the areas of of the fire district um, getting our response time down to the citizens and having additional manpower responding so those are a couple of good things that we're really working on Chief Moody, I see you're wearing a new piece of jewelry there on your chest. You can it's see it on bling, the camera. Right? Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> bling. bling, I think that's what the kids call. These are the new body cameras. The new body cameras. Body cameras by Vview, okay. which is a Seattle-based company. They were actually designed by police officers years ago. They've been around quite a while. Um, cameras aren't new to law enforcement. They're definitely not new to Shelton Police Department. We've had in-car cameras for 10-plus years. Um, this last year, we started really having some issues with those older cameras. Um, the audio was fading in and out. The maintenance was becoming difficult. And so all the way back to last year, we started having discussions around the police department about what are we going to do with these in-car cameras. Um, and it was really onerous to download the, the information from them. It was just a time-consuming. They're 10 years old. Yeah. Technologies jump leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And so as we started looking at different body cameras out there available and talking about those, we tested out several different cameras 
the ease of operation, the ease of getting the information out of them, as well as just being able to wear it and not be something big and bulky that's all over. Um, and uh, a private donor, uh, our community credit union stepped up and said, I tell you what, 10 years ago we put money towards your in-car cameras. And we said, well, our in-car cameras run about $5,000 a piece. Whoa. Um, and they said, well, we can't replace all your in-car cameras, but look at body cameras and tell us what we can do. So we worked with Vview. Um, this is the latest model that Vview came out with. And us being the first one in this area to have them gave us a pretty good deal. And Community Credit Union stepped up and bought us all body cameras. Wow. So it's great to have the community partnerships like that. Um, so now every officer has an individual camera assigned to them that they'll be wearing on duty. I held it earlier before the interview. It's quite light and less than, I mean, just oh, a few it's, ounces, it's, right? Yeah, I mean, it's no different than a cell phone. Yeah. Um, and it, the ease of operation is, is so simple. Um, that's the other thing you look at is we got so many things going on in, when we're getting out of the car on a call. Do you really want to have to fumble and look for a button or yeah. something like that? I mean, this is on, off. Pretty cool. Plain and simple. Um, and we worked with the attorneys, the city attorneys, um, policymakers, other agencies. Um, Bellingham's had them for a few years. And so we looked at all those policies and incorporated them into our practice and policies here. So you have to kind of be uh, cognizant of people who may be in the camera shot that aren't part of the interaction. Do you have to blur those faces out, or, or what are the steps? There's, that... there's a lot of, of different laws and, and varying regulations as to privacy laws, in or out of homes, things along those lines. But if you look at it, I mean, you take it one step further. We're all on camera anyways. I mean, most of the cameras we're on is somebody's um, cell phone camera sure. out there. If you're in public, in a public area, being on cameras, I mean, that it is what it is. You're in a public – where it starts to get into difficulty is victims of crimes, juveniles, in people's residences or businesses. And so we've developed policies around those of when and where they can be used. Um, and we do have a redaction program on these, which is – Again, the technology just grown leaps and bounds from used to black out things, mm -hmm. you know. With these, it's cloud-based uh, through the Internet. And so what we can do is go in there, and if I put – I want Jeff Slakey clouded out of this, and they put the cloud on your face, and through that entire video interaction, you won't be able to tell who you are. Wow. So these are some of the new technologies that we're working with, and, and I think it's for – everybody for the protection of the officers the protection of the community is just a good thing to do um, and i invite the public by the way to if you have questions on these or concerns or anything along want to know how they work come in and see us we'll walk you through our policies um, we'll be transparent on it we'll show you the cameras how they work we'll show you how we can look at the video um, it, it just makes it easier if that's the way we do things than if somebody decides they're going to send out a 10,000 page public records request for the information yeah. for no apparent reason other than just, just to be onerous. Come down, see him, find out what we're all about. Can head down to see uh, Chief Moody and Fire Marshal Patty uh, at the Civic Center, 525 West Coda Street here, as we update uh, you on things going on with the fire and police departments during this Focus on Shelton, brought to you by our community credit union. Thanks, guys. You betcha. Thanks for Thank us. you.